This is the Nardbox. What you may ask? Well, it's a portable backup and editing system for content creators on the go. You can create, edit, and share your photos and videos without the need for a computer. That's really interesting because content creators, including myself, rely heavily on a computer to edit and share their videos. It can be their desktop workstations or it could be their laptops when they're on the go. So you may be also wondering why would you ever take a look at a product like this instead of reviewing some gaming accessory or some other gaming keyboards. You know the drill. But the simple answer to that is we are trying to explore new gadgets and this is one of them. So let's find out what it is and how it works right after a message from our sponsor. Cooler Master is hosting an exciting Overwatch tournament with a $40,000 prize pool that will go towards one high school robotics team. You can watch live on Twitch or visit the eSports Arena downtown Santa Ana for free. More info at CoolerMasterInvitational.com Okay, before I share my thoughts on the Narbox, I wanted to set a baseline or point of reference as to where I'm coming from. You see, I'm a content creator and I do get the opportunity to travel around for events, covering products and whatnot, and a lot of that includes filming. And if I find something interesting, I would want to share it with the team in high quality resolution. So the only way to do that is to pop out the SD card from my camera, pull it into my computer, open up Premiere, take a fr frame grab, and then export it and send it via email to my team members and to myself so that I can share it on Instagram or Twitter. That's a complicated process. This is something where the Narbox comes into play because it eliminates the need for a computer uh, to share your content or your pictures or your videos. So what exactly is it? Well, it's a pocket-sized device that comes with an SSD, a processor, wireless capabilities, a built-in battery, and a card reader. An all-in-one package which looks pretty awesome. So how does this work? Well, picture this, you're traveling with your DSLR or mirrorless camera shooting stills and videos or videos and you're looking to share something quickly. So you wanted to pull out the raw file that you shot and you wanted to share it uh, to Instagram or Twitter or any somewhere else that you like to or you want to. So what you would do is you would pop out the SD card from your camera and insert it on the Narbox. Then you'd power on the unit, which by the way, creates its own wireless hotspot for your smartphone to connect to. And by the way, I do have to mention that the Narbox functions with the help of a smartphone. Once you complete the pairing process to the unit via the hotspot, you can fire up the Narbox app, which is available for download on both the Google Play Store for Android and the Apple Store or the App Store uh, for iOS. As you can see under the Devices tab, the Narbox recognizes the SD card. For some reason, my card showed up as no name, although I did format my card to Canon since I shoot on a C100. Speaking of the C100, the Narbox officially does not support .mts files, uh, which is an ABCHD codec that the camera shoots with. So for the purpose of this video, I'll be using Dimitri's GH5 MP4 files because that is officially supported by the Narbox. It also supports MOV, JPEG, PNG, and RAW file formats from cameras like Sony, Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, Fujifilm, and Olympus. You see, the C100 is a professional video camera, and I don't think using the Narbox with the cameras of this caliber would make any sense, especially if you're shooting on a RED, RE, Blackmagic, or even high-end Sony cameras, because those cameras shoot on different codecs, and I don't think the Narbox would be efficient enough uh, to transcode and process uh, those high-resolution videos. Anyways, coming back to the UI, the user has the option to select the required footage to back up to the 128GB internal SSD. The transfer speeds are approximately 60 to 70 megabytes per second, which isn't too bad, but there are also different ways to transfer media to the Narbox. As you can see, there's a micro SD card slot, USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports, along with a USB 3.0 micro B port. If you happen to use a CFast card, you can plug in your desired card reader of choice and transfer files that way. The Narbox can even host external hard drives like the Samsung T3 SSD. In my case, I had about 10 RAW files shot on my T1i and they were backed up on this drive. So it was nice to see it support external storage solutions that semi-professionals use uh, on a regular basis. Uh, the Narbox also comes with a charging cord, which is obviously a short one. It's a USB 3.0 cable, so you can plug it into your computer and charge it that way, or uh, a battery bank with a USB 3.0 port would be sufficient. Hardware-wise, there's an Intel Quad-Core Atom X5 processor, two gigs of RAM, along with Intel HD graphics to process photos and videos. So when you're editing them, the changes happen in real time within the Narbox and not the phone. It's also shockproof and water resistant, so that's nice to have for photographers on the go. Let's hop into a quick demo so you guys are aware of how the app works with respect to the device. So I've powered on the Narbox and my phone is connected to the wireless hotspot. Give it about a minute or two for the Narbox or your phone to uh, search for uh, the wireless network because the Narbox takes about a minute or two to initialize that process. 
But once you're connected, you can just go ahead and fire up the Narbox app. And as you can see, we're greeted with the home screen and um, you can see that there, the media is organized by date. Uh, so we have Dimitri's uh, GH5 footage over here on July the 5th. And the photos that I took um, before that were organized, which is over here. These are the .mts files for my C100. Unfortunately, the Narbox doesn't support that. Uh, we have, as we scroll down, you can see that I have my older photos. So in terms of organization, it's actually pretty cool. Um, this is interesting. That's not right, honestly. So media organization within the app is not that great. As you can see, uh, it literally organizes it randomly, uh, or I guess in my case, uh, I took this photo way before October the 16th or way after or after October the 16th. So um, that seems a lot here. So this was taken this year, but this was taken last year. And yet it organizes it the other way around, which is weird. Um, the other glitch is that when I'm when I want to click on this particular folder, so the motherboard shot, it opens the organization way from the beginning. So it doesn't actually go to that particular portion where the photos are, which again is another glitch. There are some stock videos and stock photos that the Narbox um, includes within the app. But uh, let's go ahead and edit a photo. Let's do that first. So let's pick a photo. I'm going to pick this photo over here. This is the Samsung Galaxy S8 thumbnail that I created or that I shot. Uh, for the video. So this is a .cr2 file, uh, directly shot raw from the T1i. Let's go ahead and edit this. And as you can see, it pulls up the editing tab. Very straightforward. You have controls for exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, white, white balance or, or temperatures, intensity. Uh, there isn't sharpness for some reason. I don't know why they don't have that included. Uh, I was also expecting to see filters on this um, uh, timeline or this tab, but it's not here on the Android phone, which is odd because on their website, uh, I, did, I do see a filters option, but uh, on the Android app, it's not there. Really weird. But let's go ahead and tune this image. All right, I just did a little bit of tuning and I think I like that image, but um, you, when you tap again, it, it shows the edited version. When you untap it, that's the raw version but I like how this turns out or turned out. Um, but that's pretty cool. You can also reset the entire thing if you want to all the way over there. That just resets the whole um, um, changes that you made. You can also undo the recent change that you made. Um, you can also crop photos. So if you want to crop photos, you can do that. Let's go ahead and export this. So you have the option to export it to the Narbox directly or you can export it to the gallery within your phone. So I'm going to go ahead and export it to the gallery on my phone. So it, give it some time. So the real tab is where you can actually pitch together and, you know, stitch together a video if you want to. Uh, so let's go ahead. So I made this reel for about a minute. I think it's a minute long, but I just put put in, I put in a uh, random GH5 clips. I also put in a song. So let's go ahead and watch that first. That didn't turn out that well, did it? But let me walk you through what exactly went wrong with that video. First up, there was no way to import footage directly to the timeline and then trim them accordingly. I had to go through every shot within the device and then trim them one by one and then send them to the real timeline. Next up, video effects or transitions. There is absolutely nothing built into the app, which is disappointing. I mean, how hard is it to include simple fade in and fade out transitions or even audio transitions? There was no way for me to fade in audio and then fade out the audio at the end of the video, which is really bad. Narbox officially claims that you could color correct footage within the editing tab. And I was pretty excited to try that, but I wasn't able to find any adjustments within the app. Even basic controls like brightness, contrast, and saturation were missing. The virtual app overview on their website clearly shows editing options at the bottom, and that also includes the app store for iOS devices. 
but switching to Google Play for Android reveals the lack of those adjustment options. So there are a few things that we could take away from this. Either Narbox is providing us with some BS marketing features to increase their sales, or this advanced color correcting option is iOS friendly. Albeit, I did test the app on my Android phone, and I didn't get a chance to test it on an iOS device because I don't own one. But the fact that they claim that it can be edited on their app alone itself uh, raises a lot of questions. So that I found it to be a little odd. Oh, and did I forget to mention its price? $300, guys. That's what you'll be paying for a half big product. And it only comes with a 128 gigabyte SSD, which isn't that large to store raw photos and 4K videos. And unfortunately, that's the only model they sell. The Narbox also gets hot during idle and load operations like rendering videos. I almost burn my fingers when trying to turn this off after rendering that 4K video. So that's my experience with the Narbox. To be honest with you, I was really excited to try this out when unboxing this thing, but uh, I'm not going to be happy when putting this back inside the box because I don't see a use of this uh, because the app itself is completely horrible, at least from my Android phone. So yeah, I don't think I'll be using this anytime soon. So what do you guys think of the Narbox? It's obviously not a perfect product, but I want to hear your thoughts about it, about the design. Is it a flip or a flop? Uh, let us know in the comments down below. I'm Eber with Hurricanex. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.